how do you console 168 grieving families and 800 people that are wounded? Well, that, that's the, the challenge of, of public and private leadership. But also you have to have a soul. The people that you represent, the people in your state or your city, have compassion for what occurred. Um, you don't just step over the body. You move on. But in my case, the morning after the bombing, when my wife and I went down to the bombing site, it was April, as you noted, and it was uh, uh, chilly and a mist was, was falling. And I saw coming up the street a firefighter, and he had a uniform over his shoulder, and searchlights were all over the side of the building. And um, as he walked past me, I stepped out into the street. And I said, what else does a political person say? I said, thank you for being here. And I held out my hand and he said, who are you? Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, I'm the governor of the state, thinking he would say, oh, nice to meet you. And he'd walk on up the street, but he didn't. No lie, this is not apocryphal. He took his finger and punched it in my chest and said, well, you find out who did this because the only thing I pulled from that rubble were a child's finger and an American flag. And he walked on up the street. It was like an apparition. Well, unlike the tragedy here in New York, where because everybody was incinerated, except for those you know jumpers, unfortunately. But in Oklahoma City, everybody was in front of you. So I could tell instantly this guy was in shock and was really upset, this firefighter. Well, incidents like that occurred frequently. So my wife and I, and my wife's thought, uh, uh, suggestion, had a prayer service to bring everybody together, because I think that's very important, to show a, a civic commitment to a better tomorrow. And also, she got roses, and when the families came to the site to see where their loved ones uh, had died, we gave each of them a rose and hugged them. And those are things you must do as a member of the human family. And it all just came. Well, the, the first, I, I didn't read the newspaper, listen to the radio, or watch television. Those days, pre-cell phone or texting, you didn't worry about that. But for three weeks, and um, some reporter put a microphone on my face and he said, um, we understand this is probably a Middle Eastern terrorist event. And I said, well, look, before we jump to conclusions, whoever did this, we'll find them and we'll prosecute them and we'll execute them. I mean, I'm a very firm believer in somebody who takes another life should forfeit their own. I mean, that's maybe kind of hard nosed, but that's just as a result of my background. But in any event, um, the Muslim community in Oklahoma City is small, but very involved, very engaged, very successful uh, in business and in civic work. So I said it kind of in passing. Well, a check arrived in the mail several days later for $30,000 from the Muslim community of Oklahoma City for the governor's fund. Well, there was no governor's fund, but we created it. And then I made a battlefield decision that we weren't going to be an insurance company. Uh, we were going to, because we weren't going to get money from Uncle Sam and we weren't going to raise a lot of money if one, uh, somebody wanted to spontaneously help us. So I made a battlefield decision. If you lost your children, we would give you counseling and we do everything to embrace you. If your children lost you, we would put them through college and graduate school anywhere they wish to go. But we had 170 kids who lost one parent and we had 30 children who lost both their parents. So um, everyone is out. Uh, about a year ago, no one has ever mentioned, thanks for helping me get a college degree. I couldn't have. Well, I was at a dinner, and a young woman walked up to me, and she said, uh, Mr. Keating, I, I just wanted to thank you. I went, for what? And she said, well, my name is like Laura Ice, I-C-E was her last name. And I said, are you in a relation to Paul Ice, who was a U.S. Customs agent? U.S. Customs reported to me at one time, and I knew Paul. And I said, did, any relation to Paul Ice? She said, yes, sir. He was my father. And I just want to tell you, your decision to have that money, first check from the Muslim community of Oklahoma City, to go to educate those who lost their, to, who, were, who were orphans as a result of their parents or one parent's death. 
My sister and I both went to college. My sister and I both got graduate degrees. She's a teacher, has a master's. Uh, I'm a lawyer. And she said, uh, my mother was impoverished, was utterly impoverished as a result of what happened. But we always knew we could go to college, and it worked out for us, and thank you very much. I mean, it was beautiful, but that's those are the kind of things that occurred during that time that really gave me a lot of uh, a feeling of pride. What, so you're in office less than three months when this basically happens. When this does happen, what was the longest time, longest amount of time somebody was found alive in the rubble? Oh, uh, just a matter of hours. Yeah, it was it was a recovery operation. Mm -hmm. Because but you know one thing, we had a the New York search and rescue team, the FEMA team. Ray Downey was the head of it. Ray was deputy chief, uh, building collapse here in mm -hmm. New York. Ray and I became very, very good friends. And two, you know, you would get lovely things. Well, I'm a Catholic, and Ray is was as well. And I got two rosaries in the mail. And and I took one of them to the bombing site, and, and Ray was out there in what we call the, the, the pile. And I gave the rosary to Ray, and I said, I, I, you're a Catholic, aren't you? A guy named Downey. And he said, is the Pope Catholic? And I said, yeah, I guess so. But Ray was killed on 9-11. And uh, he was just a glorious guy. His both sons, I think, were in the Wrestling Hall of Fame. Uh, both are firefighters, or were. Um, and I just, it was family, you know, those FEMA teams. One of the teams was leaving, and a guy, I always said goodbye to them, because there were 1,000 or 2,000. Oklahoma City Fire Department was about 1,000. Firefighters, police, about 1,000. But at any rate, this one guy, maybe it was Fairfax County, Virginia, held a dollar bill in the air. He said, hey, Governor, you know what this is? And I said, look, I'm in politics. I recognize money. And he laughed. All these guys laughed. He said, no, this is an Oklahoma dollar. It's a dollar I came with. It's the same dollar I'm leaving with. I never had to spend a nickel for anything. We'd go out to dinner. The check never sh showed. And how do they know we were, you know, part of the FEMA team? Um, you know, free massage, free clothing, free laundry, free everything. That was incredible. I've never seen that. But the community really embraced those who helped us. And Oklahoma City totally transformed itself out of a tragedy, uh, a, a, a sense of self-worth. I mean, the newest, one of the newest NBA franchises is there. And people are really proud of the city. Two of my three kids live there. All of them and all of us, you know, lived, uh, grew up together. They, under me, I hope, and my, mm -hmm. and my wife, in Washington, D.C., but they wouldn't live anyplace else. It's just a sense of young person's town, you know, service, sacrifice. My, I was telling these two wonderful New York City police officers that my son was a state trooper, loves law enforcement, and uh, that's all the result of the bombing, quite truthfully. Mm.